Welcome to the tape library. As Halloween is fast approaching, I thought it was about time I once again scoured the internet for some brand new real life paranormal encounters. The following stories are all featured here, with the original witness's permission. All encounters are read in their own words. Before we get started, I'm curious. Have you ever experienced something that you think may have been paranormal? You don't have to go into details if you don't want to. A simple yes or no will do. But I'm curious how many people in my audience have actually experienced something for themselves. Drop me a comment below and let me know either way. Okay, once you've done that, it's time to get started. Get yourself a warm drink, dim the lights, and get comfortable. It's time to delve into our first case of the evening. This story has haunted my family for four generations. I visited my great-grandparents frequently as a small boy. My great-grandfather was a tall man with the sense of humour of a teenager. We genuinely connected despite our obvious age gap. One day, my grandparents left me with him, and the air was different in his house that day. He was more somber and sat and appeared more callous in his rocking chair. I was young but I knew he was disturbed by something, and I just had to know what. So without thinking I asked him rather bluntly, What's got you all upset old man? I usually called him old man as a joke, and some part of me was hoping the verbal jab would lighten the mood. Thankfully this did seem to pull him from whatever mental ocean he was pondering. He grinned at me and said in a rather low voice, Would you think I was crazy if I told you a ghost story? This was weird and uncharacteristic for him, so I nearly stepped back. Some part of me thought he was beginning to slip mentally, even though he had never shown any other signs. N no I wouldn't think you were crazy, I said. I wasn't actually sure if I believed this, to be honest. Part of me was scared that he might do something uncharacteristic. Something about older people going insane scared me a lot as a kid. I remember being freaked out by a Ben 10 episode with old people attacking the main characters. He smirked at me and told me this. I grew up with a man named Jeremiah. He was my neighbour in the house beside this one when I was a kid. We played together when we were very young and were best friends throughout high school. I joined the military and he went to college. However, when I finally came home after being stationed in Japan for six years, we reconnected. One weekend, we decided to go hunting together. We planned the trip and were packed up the night before. When that morning came for us to leave, something in my stomach felt off. I felt nervous and I wasn't really sure why. The whole time driving I couldn't settle my nerves and I nearly called the whole thing off, thinking I had some kind of breakdown. However, I was finally able to swallow it and got us where we needed to go. I parked my truck and Jeremiah parked up next to me. He mentioned he was having some kind of motion sickness on the way to our spot. I mentioned I had similar symptoms and we shrugged it off, thinking maybe it was the road. Walking through the woods, I came across the clearing I didn't remember when I originally set up the spot. The air felt light, and it felt like every instinct I had told me to turn around and go home. I pushed through and about halfway through the clearing I realised I heard footsteps and breathing right behind me. The wind seemed to spiral around the clearing and my nerves finally broke and I wanted to leave. I told Jeremiah to step back a bit, but when I looked back he wasn't there. I called for him for a bit and used the whistle I packed, hoping he would hear it and say something or whistle back. When he didn't, I ran towards where we parked until I made it back to my truck. 
his truck was gone. And I immediately got upset that he just dumped me in the woods without saying anything. I drove back pissed and went to his house to figure out what was going on. When I got there, his parents were there. They passed the house on to him when he turned 20 and hadn't lived there in a few years. When I asked them about when Jeremiah would be back, they looked at me shocked, saying they never had a son called Jeremiah. I was very confused by this and eventually started asking everyone else. Nobody had ever heard of him. He wasn't in our yearbooks or school pictures. The only evidence he ever existed was the list of things we packed for the camping trip that I still have. It is worn and old now, but it has his name and what he was expected to bring. My great grandfather looked a little downtrodden when he finished the story and I didn't really know what to say. I remember hugging him and hoping he wasn't losing it. When my grandfather picked me up to go back home, since I was raised by my grandparents, I told my grandfather I thought his dad may be starting to need more help, being looked after, and I started to tell him the story I was told before he cut me off. He isn't beginning to lose it just yet, my grandfather said. He's been telling that story with that paper in his wallet since I was a kid. He told it to your dad when he was growing up as well. I believe him, or at least that he truly believes it. I didn't know how to take this, since my grandfather didn't believe in ghosts or aliens or any cryptids. I still think about it sometimes, since my great grandfather has passed. And I still have the packing list for the hunting trip him and Jeremiah were supposed to go on. Every couple of weeks I bring you deep dives into famous paranormal cases and hunt for those lesser known encounters like these. If you want to hear more stories like this, then please subscribe. Also clicking like on the video is a really easy way to support the channel. Time for case two. Hi all. Here is some context first. I moved into my college home when I was 19 years old. The house was built in 1926 and I live in a pretty sketchy area. I will hear, see, feel things somewhat frequently in the home. It's an old house. I will normally just say aloud that this is my home. I don't welcome anything negative here whatsoever. And then I won't have any other experiences for a few months. I've only ever truly been scared inside the house once. I was in the bathroom getting ready for a date, and I saw and heard the doorknob of the bathroom jiggle, like someone was trying to come in. I assumed my fiancé was just picking on me. I opened the door and he wasn't there. He was in his office playing on the computer. I've told my fiancé multiple times about seeing and hearing things. I very frequently get that feeling on the back of my neck, like someone is in the room with me when I'm alone, or that I'm being watched. He always just laughs and never believes me. Until this morning. We were both upstairs in bed. I was asleep and he was lying awake on his phone. Both of our dogs were asleep in our bed as well. There was a loud thud at about 3.30am, maybe just before. It woke me and the dogs up. One of our dogs barked once and the second was growling. My fiancé immediately jumped up, looked out of the window and didn't see anything. He stepped out of the room and then came back in, grabbed his gun and told me to call the cops. The look on his face when he came back in the room told me everything I needed to know. Somebody was in our house. I called the cops and we both armed ourselves and we stayed on the line with the operator. He insists he heard and felt someone walking around downstairs. So much so that he had me call the police and he would never do that if he didn't genuinely think someone was in here. It took less than five minutes for three cops to arrive 
and they had us meet them on the front porch. They came through and cleared the whole house other than the room that had the doggies in it. Nothing. Couldn't find anything that could have made the noise. All of the doors were dead bolted. Nothing downstairs was touched. The robot vacuum was stuck in the corner, but it shouldn't have made a noise that loud. And I went and checked the app and it had shut off at three on the dot. We looked everywhere ourselves and couldn't find anything or replicate the noise at all. He stood at the top of the stairs and had me walk through the house, and he said it sounded exactly like it when I was walking as if I was trying to sneak through the house, coming from the living room into the dining room. We can't explain it at all. We're used to hearing bangs and stuff outside and creaks in the house because it's old, but he said it sounded and felt exactly like someone was walking around downstairs. And the initial thud sounded like someone slamming one of our doors downstairs, with a vibration through the house, if that makes sense. We do have cameras that didn't pick up any movement, unfortunately. One more thing to note, he and I had just talked on Sunday afternoon about how I'm convinced the house is haunted, and he denounced it entirely. So what are the odds that this would happen at 3.30am the following morning, when only he is awake? Has anyone experienced anything similar? If you're a cop, would you be annoyed responding to this call? We felt so bad and they probably think we're crazy. Can you think of any debunking explanation? Enjoying these tales so far? If you want to answer the questions posed in that last one, you can find all the links to the original posts in the description below. So check them out if you want to learn more. Case free now, and we're taking the short trip to the pink room. When I was a child, I had an insane imagination. I can remember a ton of dreams from the ages of five to seven years old. Around that time I had a recurring nightmare when I used to live in my grandmother's house. I stayed in what we called the pink room and my parents would sleep on the other end of the house. For several nights, I woke to a severed hand on my face. I remember I tried to get my parents to let me sleep with them, telling them about the hand and they told me it was just a nightmare. So again, like always, I awoke to the hand on my face. This time I smacked the hand off me and pulled the covers over my head and listened to it scamper out of the room against the hardwood. After that I never saw the hand. Again I assumed that was a recurring dream for the ten years that followed. It wasn't until I was 17 my biological mother and her new boyfriend came over to visit me. I was playing the piano and her boyfriend blurted out about how haunted my grandmother's house was. I perked up because I always thought the house had something wrong with it too, even aside from the recurring nightmare. He told me they slept in the pink room, and one night he woke up to a hand on his face. He said it sunk back behind the curtain when he jumped up. I was literally gobsmacked, because not only had I thought that was a nightmare I always had as a child, but I had also never told anyone else about it. Somehow me and this guy had the exact experience in the exact room of the exact house. I felt so crazy afterwards and now I question how many of those nightmares I had as a kid were actually real. This next case brought to mind the movie It Follows. This one gave me the chills. I have one story that always stuck with me and simply just creeps me out to this day. When I was about 10, my family decided to go see a movie, Meet the Robinsons, at this pretty old theatre. When we sat down, I remember a woman with blondish hair and curls sitting right behind us. I was the one that sat directly in front of her. As the movie was playing, I remember feeling little kicks and what felt like someone touching my hair. Since I was so young and a pretty shy kid, I didn't say anything and just sat there silently watching the movie. 
When the movie was done, I remember taking a glance back and the woman was gone. I never said anything to my parents about it. I remember feeling creeped out, but didn't think too much into it. Fast forward a day or two later. My friends and I were playing outside. I lived in a cul-de-sac then, and my room faced where we were playing. As we were playing, I remember my friend saying, Who's that in your room? When I looked, the same woman from the theatre was waving at us through my bedroom window. I remember my heart just dropping. No one was home as my parents and brother were shopping. She stayed waving at us for a few seconds before walking out of view. My friend who asked who was in the room remembers it just as vividly as I do. I don't remember who that woman is. We lived in that house for three more years before moving. During that time, the same stuff, like feeling I was being kicked or my hair being played with, happened while I was sleeping some nights. It's an odd story and I have no explanation for it. I've never seen the woman again. Have you had any paranormal experiences yourself? If so, I'd love to share them on the tape library. You can find my email address in the description. I always enjoy hearing stories from people who listen to the show. Our last two cases come from people who have experienced multiple incidents across many years of their lives. Let's get into the first one, shall we? A few years ago now, we moved out of the home all the upcoming events I'll be talking about happened in. I really don't have a solid explanation for any of them even after years of debating how they could have happened. And not all of these stories are from my perspective. Some of my other family members and a friend contribute to these experiences. Also, me and my family are very religious and believe in a god and spirits. I don't know if us being superstitious could have affected our take on what's happened in front of our eyes. But to me, they very much did happen. Anyway, rewinding years back to our old house where all this happened, I'll start with what I have experienced. I'm honestly still terrified by this first experience, and I remember how it felt in the moment it happened. Me and my sister shared a room in that old home, and we had a bunk bed. She had the top bunk and I had the bottom bunk. I was sitting on my bed, I think, reading or on my phone. I don't remember, but I was preoccupied. No one else was in the room with me, and I wasn't really paying attention to any of the background noises like the heater or the TV in the distant living room. The door was also shut, so really any other noises would have been drowned out. Clear as day though, I remember hearing breathing coming from the top bunk. No one else was in the room. Extra noises wouldn't have been that clear. It sounded like an old man, heavy breathing right above me in that same room. I was terrified, I remember holding my breath and still hearing it. It was creepy and I wasn't staying. I literally booked it out of my room. Mm. To this day I don't know who it could have been, but it sure as hell wasn't me or my family. I'm related to a man breathing above me, but I was also confronted with something else. In my parents' room, I remember sitting on their bed doing homework or something like that. It was just me again, but I swear to God, I saw my great-grandma, who had recently passed away at the time, standing in the room with me. I could also feel a strong presence of... something, as soon as I saw a glimpse of her. It was such a strong feeling that tears came into my eyes. I never felt such a strong presence feeling since then, if that's how you describe it. But it felt so real. My last experience I remember is just seeing a shadow figure in the corner of my eyes. It easily could have been shadows playing tricks on me, but I just remember distinct humanoid figures in the corner of my vision. Looking the way I saw them, and then seeing nothing. 
Going to my family stories now, I haven't asked them much about it, but my sister has some. Once her and a friend of ours was over. We were in the basement watching TV and I told them I was going to go upstairs to get something. I didn't come down for a while, so they decided to come up and make popcorn while I waited. They did that and then started heading back down. As they were leaving to the steps, they saw me down the hall, walking from my room to our parents' room. No big deal. But the thing is, I wasn't up there. I was downstairs. I came downstairs just after they came up to get popcorn, and I was waiting for them. No one else was home. Two people saw this other person walk from room to room, but it wasn't me, and it wasn't anyone else. I still don't know who it could have been, but I hate it. I hate how we couldn't think of an explanation, and still can't. My sister experienced other slight things, like ringing in the ears while she was in my parents' room, where I swore I felt the presence of somebody, and saw my grandmother. Maybe some shadow figures, but outside of that, nothing else. Again, this could all have such an obvious, realistic explanation. But there's one detail that just makes it all feel so wrong, you know. Just chilling. That house we lived in for ten years had a secret literally none of us knew about, until a year before we moved out. My mum was at one of our neighbourhood's Halloween parties when she learned this. A neighbour told her that years ago, some man had killed himself in our home. The other neighbours tried shutting her up, so I feel like she wasn't making it up. Some secret the neighbourhood didn't want other people knowing for good reason. We have no idea what room or how he killed himself, but after my mum shared that with us, after we moved out, I haven't viewed that house the same since. I'm just hoping someone has a similar experience or a better explanation than a haunting, but I honestly can't put it down to anything else. Again, me and my family are Catholic, but I don't want to be that one crazy lady and point to everything being ghosts. Anyone have an idea? Maybe tricks being played by shadows for years? Or maybe squeaking pipes that made us hear those other noises? It just all feels so wrong, not right. But I know I'll never be revisiting that home. We have one final submission for tonight. This person actually reached out a year ago with a whole host of encounters that took place in their childhood home. They recently got back in touch with a bunch more stories their parents had from this time. Interestingly, the events take place across two different homes the family lived in. I will try and track down the original stories and include the link in the description if you want to go back. All these stories are 100% true. They take place in two different locations. The only thing that has been changed are names as well as some dates for privacy reasons. However, before I tell any of my stories, I would like to try and give everyone a mental image of this house. Again, it was originally an old church, but had been remodelled into a house. The only thing that remained of the church was the wooden floor in the den of the house. This house was basically a big rectangle. On one end you had my parents' bedroom, on the other you had mine and Mark's bedroom. In between you had two rooms, the den and the living room. Now in the den there was a little hallway that led into the laundry room. And in the living room there was a doorway that led to the kitchen. Last thing I promise, I was far too young to remember any of these. So these are all my parents stories. Now then, let's begin. The first story takes place over 20 years ago. Back whenever I was only a newborn. My mum was lying in one of our recliners and I was on her chest. As she was laying there, she suddenly felt something very, very heavy start pushing her downwards into the recliner, making it so she couldn't breathe. My dad at the time was at work, so she was the only one home. My mum, being a woman of religion, began in her head to call out to God, 
begging for him to protect me. As soon as she did, it stopped. She then quickly got up and took me and left the house. During the next few years, a few small things happened. Those being like my mum and dad both hearing choir music, as well as loud, heavy boot footsteps coming from outside their bedroom. Again, this happened multiple times. One other small thing that happened, my mother was doing laundry. Now this is probably around 2006. I'm up the road hanging out with a friend of mine. Mark hadn't been born yet. My dad was at work. Our dryer had this little piece of metal sticking out of it. The point of this was so the dryer door would stay shut. There is no way to open the drawer without forcefully pulling on it to open. My mum, who is once again home alone by herself, realised that her dryer was done. So she stops whatever she was doing at the time to go get the clothes out of the dryer. Only to then see the dryer door is hanging wide open. Something opened it. My mum in the heat of the moment just said, and I'm not making this up, well, the least you could have do was fold the damn things before very quickly leaving the house. The next big thing that happened, it was late at night, probably around 11 or 12 a.m. My dad was just about to go to sleep and he was laying down in bed. He saw a dark, shadowy figure standing at the foot of his and my mum's bed. According to my dad, he grabbed and cocked his handgun and pointed it at the figure. However, by the time he had the gun pointed at where the figure was, they were gone. This all happened within five seconds. My poor mother, who was asleep at the time, woke to the sound of a gun being cocked. The house was then put up for sale a week later. The last thing of interest that happened in that house, I did tell you in the other post, however, I'll tell it again here. My parents were trying to move me from sleeping in their bedroom to my own, but for some reason I wouldn't do it. My only reason being I was scared to. So my mum asked me, why are you scared to sleep in your own room? Do you need a nightlight maybe? And apparently I said, and I quote, because of the tall dark man in the corner over there. Then apparently I pointed over to a corner of my room where, surprise surprise, no one was. Fast forward once again, and we are at the current house I live in. I have a question for you. Have you ever walked into an empty room and the second you walked in, you knew something was just off? You can't explain what it is other than the feeling of being watched. I ask only because there is a room just like that in my current house. We'll simply call it the den. I remember the very first day I was in the house, I felt like I was being watched. Like there was someone just out of sight staring at me. Even to this day, over 10 years later, I still get that feeling. I avoid that room at any cost, and I hate stepping foot in there, day or night. I feel sorry for the constant explaining reader, but this will hopefully be the last thing. I just feel it's very important for you to have a mental image of everything. In my current house, there is a central hallway. At one end is the front door. At the other end is the back door. Now this hallway has four doorways, the den, the office, the kitchen and my parents' room. The kitchen has a bar so you are able to see the whole living room and into my parents' room if their door is open. And then further up next to the front door is the den. The kitchen and den are right next to each other. They are only separated by one wall in the central hallway. The first story from this house I would like to tell you takes place five months ago. I was standing alone in the kitchen doing dishes and cleaning the counters. It's probably two in the morning. As I am in the middle of doing the dishes, I suddenly hear two very loud bangs coming right from behind me in the den. It was as if a grown man took his fist and hit them against the wall with full force. After a few seconds, it starts up again. However, this time much closer. It's in the central hallway, right next to me. And again, it sounds like someone is just banging on the walls over and over again with their fists as hard as they can. 
It's so forceful I'm able to see a few pictures we have on the wall shaking. I very quickly grabbed my phone and ran full speed into my bedroom, closing the door behind me, all while the banging is still going on. A few days later, once again I'm in the kitchen doing my chores, when suddenly there is a low, deep growling noise coming from the den. It was deeper than any human could ever make. After the growl, there was one loud bang on the wall next to me. I quickly went back to my room. As I'm in my room, I can hear stuff very clearly being knocked down in the kitchen where I just was. And after a few minutes, the noise finally stops. A few minutes later, I step out of my room and look towards the kitchen, where I saw two pans laying on the kitchen floor as well as multiple kitchen drawers having been opened that were previously shut, as well as the pantry door which was previously open, now shut. This will be the final story that personally happened to me, however it's something that happened multiple times. One night I'm laying in bed when I suddenly feel something get into bed with me. Now my first thought was just, oh it's the cat, then I remember, Wait, no, the cats are outside. Plus, that was far too heavy to be a cat. I very quickly grabbed my phone, turned on the flashlight, and looked to where I felt the bed move. Where there is nothing. I shrug it off as me probably just being too tired and imagining things. At least that's what I thought. Until it happened again a few minutes later. This time when I shined my flashlight, I actually saw the bed sinking down a little bit, like a person was sitting on the edge of my bed. Right as I noticed it, it went back to normal, as if the person just got up and left the bed. Fast forward to the next night, same thing, I'm in bed by myself, when I then feel something crawl into bed next to me. I turn and look and again there's nothing. This happened for multiple nights in a row. This also didn't just happen to me. My mum and dad have both experienced the same thing. As if someone was sitting on their bed. Even though they were alone at the time. Speaking of my mum, these last two stories focus on her. And these are very short encounters. One day she was sitting in the living room by herself. She set down her reading glasses to grab a stronger pair. As she was in the middle of putting on her new glasses. The one she just set down on the table go flying across the living room. She described it like someone swatted them off the table and across the living room. The last story takes place almost a year ago. My mum came home from work late one night. Everyone was asleep and she heard a female voice come from mine and Mark's bathroom. The voice just said, Hello? She stopped. She said hello back, and asked who was in there. When there was no reply, she turned on the bathroom light, to find there was no one in there. That's all for this entry into the tape library. All being well, I should be back a little sooner than usual with our next entry. So I hope that we can spend Halloween evening together. Until then, pleasant dreams.